Today we're going to be talking about the five things that you must do in 2017, 2018 to get a job in web development. This isn't going to be so much on skills. There's a separate video for that. This is about the stuff that you should already be doing. And if you're not, you're really putting yourself at a disadvantage when it comes to job searching and landing that web development software job. Before we get started, I just want to do a little quick shout out to this Landa Tech Job for Dummies Humble Bundle. There will be a link in the description. Right now, a lot of the things that we're going to be talking about, you're going to find little bits and pieces from these books. So for a dollar, you can get How to Land Your Dream Career, Resume, Job Search, Productivity. You get all those ebooks for a dollar. For eight dollars or more, you get How to Get a Coding Job, Personal Branding, Job Interviews, Job Searching, and Social Media. And then all the way up to $15, you get all the other stuff, plus coding with JavaScript and getting a web development job. Just some great resources that are only available for about the next two weeks. And you can decide if you want to give all your money to me, which is dope, do that. No, uh, or if you want to go ahead and give it all to charity, right? Or to the publisher, it's all up to you. Uh, just one quick thing I wanted to say. So the first and foremost, if you don't already have a GitHub account, you need to get yourself tip number one is get a github right and you're saying okay dylan well i've people have told me this and i just don't know what to put on your github well the easiest thing and try to upload to it frequently right you can see here i was in sort of job search mode and i start uploading it to it more frequently you don't need to do every day obviously that's great but start working on projects with other people start working on your own projects and just committing them and at the very least, if you don't have anything to commit, what you can commit are the algorithms from Free Code Camp, from Code Fights. You'll notice in my Code Fights section here, granted I only actually uh, uploaded them two or three times, but I have in here tons and tons of algorithms on here. So if I took the effort of doing one algorithm a day, I go ahead and push that to my GitHub. Why are we? What so? So not only what you should do, but why should you do it? Well. It's actually one of the very few ways that you can prove to a company, especially when you're landing that junior role and you don't have any really relevant work experience, that you're actually coding. Uh, they're not just going to take your word for it. That's why we have things like technical interviews and take-home projects and things like that. But here you can say, look, this person is actually writing code. And even if it's just algorithms, they can see it and, see, and work through it and see, okay, where's this person at right now in their learning process? So get yourself a GitHub account, put it on your resume and link to it, put all your projects on there. And some people are concerned about, hey, well, I'm concerned because I started my GitHub right when I was on there and all the stuff I have is dog shit. That's okay. You know what's better than, uh, you know what's worse than dog shit? No shit. All right, so <laughs> it's, uh, get it on there, start pushing to your GitHub and start having an active GitHub account. This is really what you're gonna need to have on there. All right, the next thing that you're gonna need Tip number two is get yourself a website. If you don't already have some sort of portfolio site, uh, this is what I use for my YouTube channel. You are really doing yourself a disservice. What's the point of your website? Well, one, it's a little bit of personal branding. You can go to, uh, say say I wanted to have DylanIsrael.com. That was available. That would probably be a pretty good um, name for me. So find something with your name in it or something else. In my case, I have a YouTube channel. It's one of my main selling points. So I just have this. On here, I have various aspects of it. I it's a cool it's a cool thing because it can actually be one of your portfolio projects, right? This is the very first thing that I ever built in Angular JS, and it helped me land an Angular J, uh, JS role. I built it from start to finish. I have various things hooked up to it: filters, controllers, um, um, HTTP services, uh, pulls from the YouTube API, right? All this sort of stuff. So make it make it nice, make it look well, and have your projects on it. Uh, not only have your projects on your GitHub, but have working projects on your portfolio site. You can get, you can go on sites like GoDaddy and buy a URL for about ten dollars a year and hosting for about three, four, five dollars a month. You're not going to need a lot of hosting. Have it there. Have a portfolio site where people can go and see your projects and work through them. Not only look through the code, but actually, actually click through it. Web development is a very visual thing. You need to be able to see that, right? And it doesn't. You know, it doesn't have to take up two years of your life building this site, right? I built this in about uh, a week and a half, right? And it's not the not my best work ever, 
but it is something that people can go and see. Okay, well, this is what this guy built out in Angular JS, and he has some skill, and you know, go from there. And granted, this is a year old. I want to update it, and I want to actually put all my projects on here for for potential employers to click through. But it is better than nothing. You should definitely have a online personal portfolio. In my case, it is a it is just a, a YouTube portfolio, but it also sells that point. Now, more than anything else, have a side project. This is tip number three, and probably the most important tip, especially if you're a junior developer trying to get your foot into the door. The, the worst thing you can do is not be unique. That is the absolute worst thing you can do. Uh, when senior developers and you know architects are looking to hire developers, what they want is, a, they want a couple things. They want someone who's passionate about it, always learning, and somebody who can code. And if you're passionate, always learning, they'll even be okay if you can kind of code, right? So uh, what are some projects? My side project is YouTube. I have a couple others, but that's my main one. You could maybe start a YouTube channel. I'm building a course uh, about how to create a coding channel and why you should and all the resources available for you. You can also uh, create a blog. You can create... By the way, look how much of a heifer I look in in that Motel 6. Yeah, uh, so uh, you can create a blog. You can um, host a meetup. All these sort of things that are going to make you unique as a candidate to so that you stand out and that you show that you're passionate and always learning. And that is the importance of a side project. And if you can, make some money off it. You know, get some, it's some, some personal branding, right? One of those books we saw was about personal branding. This is personal branding. And your blog, your YouTube channel, your uh, book that you're writing, whatever it is, find what you enjoy and start a side project in it and plan to continue it long term. Even after you land that, land that role and benefit from it, right? Financially or career-wise. So side projects is probably the most important of all five tips, in my opinion, uh, for standing out. That's really what you want to do uh, when you're applying for these roles and getting roles and getting callbacks is how do you stand out? And side projects, side projects, side projects. Number four, get a LinkedIn. Not only get a LinkedIn, do something with your LinkedIn. Make it stand out. Have a background header image. Have an image. Have information in your in your in your description here, actually have it filled out. Have details in here, have media. You'll see in here, I have an AngularJS project, interviews, backend API projects, a certificate of, from volunteering. Another great thing that you can do to make yourself stand out, volunteer. Um, when you're filling out your experience section, be as detailed as you can be. Bullet points are used great on your resume, also on your LinkedIn. Showcase what skills and technologies you are using. Because a lot of times when you're interviewing, not only will they have your resume, they'll also go to your LinkedIn. And the people who are interviewing you and submitting your resume, a lot of times they're just recruiters. They're not the most technical people. All they're looking for are check boxes. They're like, can I check this box? 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 I'll give you a perfect example. I used to put version control down as a skill set. And what that means is I can use Git, GitHub, Tortoise SVN, whatever it is. But I, I talked to a recruiter and they would always ask me if I had Git. I said, well, I put version control. And to them, that's not the same thing. So I had to take off version control and put Git on there and I started getting more callbacks. And that was one thing I learned from these recruiters who didn't know that Git was a form of version, or version control was a form of, a, a Git was a form of version control. So have detailed description, include media if you can, right? Your projects, your, um, if you have a cover letter, if, or excuse me, if you have a letter of recommendation from all my workplaces, I have a letter of recommendation from my bosses included on here, right? Um, include education, right? On here, free code camp, front end developer certificate. Uh, break it down. Don't just put it on there. A lot of people don't even know what free code camp is. And it's up to you to sell them. Put, it, put some media in there. You'll see here, I say this is broken up into 10 basic, intermediate, and advanced projects, as well as 16 algorithms, 21 intermediate, 5 advanced. Sell them on it. Talk about what skills that it's working on. 500 hours of estimated uh, coursework. Include all your certifications, volunteer experience. Another thing that you can not only do some good in the world, but you can also make yourself unique. I volunteer through code.org whenever they call me, which has been about three times in the last two years. And uh, Hour of Code is coming up, so I, include, I encourage you, if you can, to go to code.org and uh, sign up there. 
include volunteer experience uh, that makes you stand out. It's all about standing out. It's all about being passionate, enjoying this, standing out through that to, to really get noticed. Same thing with your skills. Go ahead and throw that in there. Any courses you have, fill all this out. A lot of people don't. They just, oh, I have a, I have a, I have a LinkedIn. I have zero friends, uh, but I have a LinkedIn, so that box is checked. No, we need more than that. We need you to go fill out showcase all this information your linkedin is basically everything you couldn't fit on your resume linkedin more details about this stuff on your resume linkedin right uh you can see right here i have publications you can see right here i have honors and awards projects i should definitely have more projects on here than i have but this is a at least you have a project section you can see it on there and i talk i give a description definitely put descriptions right your tube is a, a hackathon project i worked on um you know, fill out your LinkedIn. Don't just have a LinkedIn. Fill it out. Imagine it's your resume and that you're handing it to someone who may or may not give you a job. You really need to have your LinkedIn. And that brings us to our fifth and final point, which is have a decent resume. And what do I mean by that? Well, play to your strengths, right? Uh, my resume, now that I have work experience, is very different than my resume when I didn't have work experience. So my my weak point at objectively is I don't have a degree. That's that's objectively my weak point. I don't have a, a boot camp other than the the free free code camp uh, uh, front end certificate. Uh, so my education goes on the bottom, along with my volunteer experience, which is really just there to make me sound in, an interesting candidate. And now more so, my work experience goes up. But that's not how it always used to be. My personal projects, I had like seven personal projects on here because that was what I needed to sell me as a potential candidate. And it was right here where my work experience is. And technical skills was right there as well. And the reason for that is, again, it goes back to having a nice, clean resume where that recruiter can just check off what skills you have and see what skills you don't. So get it nice, front and center, play to your strengths, right? One of the things I did with the mentoring session was someone handed in a three-page resume to me, asked me to review it. First off, 99% of the time, you're going to want a one-page resume, 99% of the time. It's going to need to be organized. It's going to need to have a lot of information on there, but you can fit it on one page. You can see right here, I have a lot of stuff going on here. I got education, volunteer experience. I have three different jobs with you know six or seven bullet points on this first one, a description of the job, all my skills, personal projects with bullet points, and I have a whole section here of where my GitHub is so they can see that I actually code, my LinkedIn so they can get more details, my portfolio or my website right there, as well as a section saying willing to relocate because sometimes if you're applying for jobs they just if you're in a different state they're going to throw it out the window right so you're going to want to put that in there somewhere now some people will disagree about whether or not you should have a description on your on your um portfolio as well as a photo so a description i'm kind of iffy on it uh i can't really tell you one way or the other but i'm very po i'm very pro having a photo on your resume uh take a, a nice clean cut photo of yourself looking professional showcasing that you are a real person make it harder for them to turn you down they see they put a face with the resume you're not just another person you're you're an applicant that they you want them to remember and that's why i include a photo on there to show that hey at least one time in this photo your boy wore a tie and looking professional, right? He didn't just have his StarCraft gaming t-shirt on. So organize your resume in a way that's clear, easy to stand, and in, in achievements and tasks, this is really crucial, uh, especially when you're just starting out. You want to really focus on what you did, not necessarily what your job entailed, but milestones of your job, right? So you can see here I have six ones talking about what I built, um, gathering requirements, refactoring code for a certain application, uh, periodic code review, and mentoring the other developers, things like that. Things that are bullet points of tasks, achievements, personal projects. Again, personal projects, and you put them on your resume. Don't let this be something that's an after the fact. You want it to be front and center. And volunteer experience, another great thing to show that you're, you're very passionate about this and always learning. So those are my five tips and very practical ones that you guys can really implement today. Maybe not the side project one. You can get started on it today, but it's not really going to be there, completed, and or in a, in a state to be shown for quite some time. But I really encourage you guys to 
If you're not doing all five of these things, you're really going to have a trouble landing a role in today's world. Have a good resume. Have a good LinkedIn. Have a GitHub that you're pushing to. Have a side project. And I forgot what the other one was right now, but you guys watched the video. You know. Uh, so uh, uh, really just keep on pushing forward, guys. Oh, and a portfolio site. Excuse me. That's number five, portfolio site. But these are the things that you really are going to need, especially as a junior developer, someone trying to be a junior developer. If you're not, you're, you're just shooting yourself in the foot because everybody who does have this, they're going to be more sought after. They're going to be more looked after. And especially if you're a self-taught developer like myself, you're going to want, you're going to need this. You're going to need this to help walk you through the door and sell yourself. So I hope you take advantage of this. And again, if you're interested in those books, there'll be a link in the description so that you can read up on some other resources. Sometimes it only takes one or two uh, bits of information from a book to really push you over the edge. And I hope these five tips, if you're not already doing them or if you learned one thing from it, I hope it helps you land that role. So as always, guys, thank you so much for watching the video. Don't forget to comment, like, subscribe, and share. These are my five tips for how to actually get a job in web development if you aren't already right um, I'll see you next time bye hey guys thanks for watching the video if you happen to be looking for a boot camp I couldn't recommend Dev Mountain any higher they also include housing with their tuition so you can get up and go and get started right away thanks again for watching and I'll see you guys in the next video bye